Welcome and thank you for attending these sessions. I'll be your moderator. I'm Michelle Lopez with Finish. Um, our first speaker today is Jay Fowler. He is a solution engineer team lead at Esri, specializing in local government. He's located in Charlotte, North Carolina, and connects with GIS users across the Southeast. Jay attended the University of South Carolina, receiving a bachelor's in media arts and a master's in science, a master's of science and geography. Thank you so much. All right, thank you guys for being here. Excited to talk about ArcGIS Hub today. And I'm gonna start off with a couple quick fun facts for you. So 7% um, of local governments share data effectively. That's a research poll that you know, was returned. Pretty surprising, right? Pretty low, low uh, number there of how people feel like governments are sharing information. One third of US cities don't have a platform or a process for how they share information with the public. That's pretty surprising as well to me. I was really shocked by that one. 75% of Americans have never volunteered. I gotta admit myself, I, it's been a while. I need to get back to the volunteering game. But you can see with some of this information that there's clearly you know, a little bit of a disconnect between how governments are able to share and engage with various communities. And they're just not synced up on the information that gets out there, on the goals that they have. This can lead to you know, kind of an uninformed public, uh, misunderstandings about government and the role of government and things like that. And that then kind of manifests itself into other challenges. So we're here today to talk about ArcGIS Hub. It's a product that definitely can help out in the space. It, in my opinion, is essentially a content-driven website builder. The content is primarily coming from ArcGIS. So it uh, makes it really easy to pull in all your maps and all your apps and various pieces of content from ArcGIS Online. Uh, can you use other platforms as well? Absolutely, if you have some Power BI dashboards, for example, you could feature those as well. So it's gonna be a content-driven platform. It's great for data sharing. It's great for establishing the initiatives that you have and really leveraging the community to get more information. So what are some of the things that you can do with ArcGIS Hub? The first is sharing data on a common platform. We see lots of folks using the open data capabilities inside a hub. It's really organized, streamlined, and efficient. If you've had some data in ArcGIS Online and you've used Hub to do the open data, you just share it with a group essentially and it just becomes available through Hub. So it makes it super easy for sharing that information, it makes it a great way to involve more people essentially in your initiatives. Really good way to coordinate with the community uh, we're going to talk about the community users inside a hub, and that's how you can find some trusted groups, whether it's other municipalities, whether it's uh, universities and academics, uh, whether it's just the community in general. Great way to uh, get more people involved. Also, really way, good way to build trust and inspire action. So it's a modern approach to community building through uh, the hub process and really encourage people to join into the initiatives that you set as an organization. They can follow it, they can receive updates on your process, the performance metrics you might be releasing, or if you're sharing data, when you release new data sets, for example. Uh, a good example on this page is Volunteer Escondido. Uh, we got a great YouTube video on this if y'all wanna see more about the use case. They stood up Hub and increased their volunteers by 25%. So really great uh, video that y'all can check out if you're interested in kind of the volunteering space and how uh, that could help out uh, with government. It also helps you communicate about some important topics. And in my mind, this is one of the really strong points because it's incredibly easy to spin up new project pages. Uh, it's, it's not something that you have to plan out for six months, right? It's something that you can kind of spin it out really quickly and then gradually uh, make it better and better and better, hone it. And you'll have the ability essentially to get these out, get feedback tools uh, in the side, in the hands of folks internally, maybe the public as well, um, and kind of show your progress uh, on various projects that you might be working on. Cool, so let's talk about some of the capabilities and how Hub breaks down. We get a lot of questions. What's the difference between Hub Basic? There's a Hub Premium product. You know, How does this all work? So if you have access to ArcGIS Online today, you have access to Hub Basic at no additional cost. So that's super important to note. Got a lot of folks who are like, oh, I'd love to use that, but we don't have access. 
if you have access to ArcGIS Online, Hub Basic is included. So if you haven't tried it out, we'd love, as soon as uh, NCAG wraps up, go, go create a Hub site. You know, it's really fun. It's really easy to do. So Hub Basic essentially gives you the capabilities that you see around open data. I'm sure you've seen open data sites from various uh, communities in North Carolina. Um, and then you don't have to just use the open data part. It's the ability to really build out a great uh, website that's content driven from ArcGIS. So a lot of times uh, folks say, I wanna build a one-stop shop, right? I got a number of dashboards, uh, maybe a couple maps. I, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting them to people. I'm sending emails with lots of links. Uh, people are bookmarking things, but they get confused. This is a really good way to just build a site that features all that content for them. They go there, that's gonna be their one-stop shop. We do have a hub premium option. It's an additional cost. Um, the reasons that you know you might have a business case around this usually fall into a couple categories. A lot of time it's going to be around um, the, the ability to have the template builder so that you can uh, essentially maybe work with your communications department, uh, come up with the branding for your organization, come up with just the standard format of your hub sites, template to size it. I can't believe I pronounced that correctly. And then reuse that again and again and again, right? You can give that tool to various other departments, various other stakeholders, empower them to take ownership of that, but kind of give them a nice place to start off, right? So that's one thing we see a lot of. Another thing is the community identity. So this is an important thing to note. ArcGIS Online, you have an organization, you have a bunch of user types, probably creators um, inside of ArcGIS Online. If you get Hub Premium, you get a second ArcGIS Online organization. It's known as the community organization. And that is where we put in these community identities. And they are essentially creators in a separate ArcGIS Online organization. So what that means is that you can partner up with trusted groups. It could be volunteer groups, uh, Meals on Wheels, could be uh, you know just citizens as a whole, could be specific universities, uh, groups of developers in the community. You can empower them with these creators in this community org. Once you give them that creator, they have the ability to uh, edit data securely. They have the ability to access certain applications securely that maybe the public doesn't have access to. Um, so there's a whole lot of power in those community identities and we're happy to chat about that in more detail. Hopefully we'll have a little bit of time for Q&A at the end. Uh, a couple other things on the Hub Premium side, it does have the ability to do uh, some initiatives that we have kind of pre-baked, has the ability to do event management. So if you wanna hold an event, like a, a, we're doing a comp plan, we we'll do a planning event, get the community in. It could be virtual, it could be in person, it can do events, so that's uh, nice. And finally, it has a really great teams-based approach so that you can build out teams, you can specify who can view these sites, you can specify who can edit these sites. That can be the public. I mentioned like trusted groups in the public. Uh, you can actually give them a community identity. You can let them edit the hub site if you want to. So you can, there's a whole lot of flexibility uh, when it comes to those community identities and then how folks can rally around the teams. Finally, super important to note, there's kind of a, a cousin to Hub, right? There's enterprise sites. If you have ArcGIS Enterprise stood up, you can use enterprise sites. As you notice, has all the great capabilities of Hub Basic. A lot of folks use it for kind of internal uh, sites. So that could be like that one-stop shop for various departments within your organization. Um, the only limiting factor on enterprise sites is it's, it's never gonna have the ability to kind of do that community building where you have community users tying in in a separate organization. So not a big problem, um, just something to be aware of, right? All right, well, let's kind of take a different look at this. So in this case, we have citizen of Mad Madison, Wisconsin using Hub Basic to do open data. Great use case, right? If you need to do open data for government transparency, things like that, you have the ability to do it today in Hub Basic. City of Tucson, Arizona has Hub Premium. They have a limited number of community users. They have 100 community users. They might have a, a small group of developers that they want to partner with, maybe allow them to essentially share some data with them. Great use of Hub Premium. So they have you know, some of those capabilities we just talked about plus the ability uh, to have a limited number of community users. That alarm going off, it's like, oh man, am I still asleep and I'm just waking up? 
Finally, Hub Premium Unlimited. That would be uh, if you had a use case to just give as many people out in the community creator licenses uh, to share, to edit data, uh, to edit content, to crowdsource, things like that. A uh, great uh, use case there in Norfolk, trying to you know get more and more community participation by using this. So kind of a different way to look uh, through this. Going to briefly hit on some product updates. Released a new change log for Hub. I was checking this out before I came to NCAUG so I could make sure I was giving you all the most updated, latest and greatest. It was a great change log to kind of see how this product is evolving, what new features are there, what bugs have been identified and fixed. Uh, it's being updated all the time. So I know it sounds boring, but check out the change log. <laughs> All right, uh, shareable and embeddable cards. So important thing to note, the shareable cards are out. And what that means is for the application card, the map card and the iframe card, you can now generate a shareable link. You can put that shareable link in an email, on a different website in various places. And when somebody clicks on that link, it's gonna take them to your hub site. It's gonna scroll down to wherever on the hub site uh, that card is located. Super cool. It's kind of like a, if you think about like a HTML anchor link, it's kind of like that. Um, but it makes it really easy and it's configurable. So embeddable cards are on the roadmap. They are not ready yet, but you can kind of think of that as like a decomposition of hub in a sense, where you're going to be able to take components of hub, like the cards, like the application card, put it into your main city, county, state, organization website. Super cool. Um, so we think that's going to uh, really drive traffic back to the main hub site, but allow you a lot more flexibility to kind of work with maybe some of your existing web content. Super excited about that one. Map-based surveys. This was a really cool uh, release and uh, creative use of Survey123, right? So you, you're used to looking at Survey123s, you know what they kind of look like. They don't really look like this, right? Well, inside a hub, you can use Survey123 check the box, uh, and it's going to essentially theme it differently for Hub. So you can see this is a more map-centric approach to a survey on that panel on the side. That's where your actual survey is going to be, but you get a nice big map. We find that people in the community who don't really interact with Survey123s, who don't really interact with maps a whole lot, find this experience a little more user-friendly. Uh, so a really great option, and it works well on tablets and phones, so you can see there uh, we got a tablet and the responsive design uh, works well. So if you haven't checked that one out, it's a really cool one to check out also. All right, the team card. So I mentioned teams are super important. Hub has a whole team back in where you build out uh, essentially who's going to be able to view, who's gonna be able to edit. Hint, hint, the secret is it's just groups in ArcGIS Online. We just give it a different name for folks who are gonna be using Hub who maybe aren't as familiar with administering ArcGIS Online. But teams are super important and we have a new team card so that that can be featured on the site so folks can easily gain access to the team backend. So let's go on to the roadmap and continue talking about teams. So um, I mentioned like the, the team backend, right? So we're overhauling what that team uh, workspace looks like. This is on the roadmap, it's coming, it's not out. Uh, but it will be a, a more fresh, more user-friendly experience on the team space. This is where they could, for instance, add content. You know, So if you have people from other agencies, other municipalities, uh, trusted groups who are part of the team, it's going to be really easy for them to find this space and add content to it so it's featured in your hub site so that you have access to it as well uh, securely. Team-based discussions. This is also on the way. Uh, so this is where you're going to be able to uh, essentially have discussions back and forth with your teams about any piece of content inside of Hub, ArcGIS Online. Important to note, also going to have a geographic approach, right? Makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, this would be really great in the use case of volunteering efforts. Like, for example, if we're doing like some sort of a trail run here, right? And we need to get our volunteers to go out there and focus on the trail because got a lot of rain, it's been washed out, things like that. Really easy way to have team-based discussions and tie them to a place on the earth. So uh, my favorite section, the let's get real J section of the presentation. <laughs> what are some common problems that we see a lot of folks having with Hub, with Hub Premium? People purchase Hub Premium and they don't set it up. 
you'd be surprised, but it happens a lot. I get it, right? We're all super busy. You had a use case for it. You got the email, hey, activate your hub premium. You're like, I'll do it later, right? And then something else came up and then something else came up and then something else came up. I totally understand. The problem is that all of a sudden you get that uh, project that's on fire from the county manager's office, from the city manager's office. We need to do this today. You go back to activate your hub. The link has expired. So now you got to go to tech support. That's going to take a day. It slows you down. So if you go with hub premium, I encourage you to carve out a little time, go ahead, get it set up on that acquisition instead of kind of letting that email get stale in your inbox. Next, and we're going to see this in the demonstration, uh, there's a lot of granularity about how you can share content, whether it's the hub site, whether it's the pages, whether it's the apps and maps inside of your hub. So it can be easy to not share everything as you need to. So, hey, my site's public. When people go to this page, it says log in. Well, the page is actually has its own sharing setting. So you just got to be aware that you're going to need to make sure you have uh, consistent sharing uh, as you want it to be shared appropriately. Next, we uh, release the ability to have essentially a short transactional draft of your hub site. So what does that mean? That means that uh, your hub site's out, it's in production and the public can see it. You're making some changes. They can't see your changes until you publish the draft, right? Um, this is great because it allows you to edit your hub site without the public you know, catching your spelling errors, essentially things like that, right? Uh, but it also sometimes causes some confusion. So you wanna make sure that uh, you are publishing your drafts when you are ready. Uh, this feature is really great, as I mentioned, kind of more for short transactional editing. It's not really great to build out a huge hub site because you know what's gonna happen. Um, we're overhauling our whole hub site. It's gonna take us two months to do it. Uh, about one weekend, somebody catches a spelling error you can't, you can't essentially have multiple versions. You're gonna to have to release the whole version to be published. So something to be aware of there. Next, this is just a, a personal pointer for me. Um, if you have the access to a web server or maybe a service like Dropbox, things like that, where you can reference an image URL, that is super portable. So instead of dragging and dropping pictures on, you can do that. You should do that when you need to. But if you wanna make really portable sites, the URL, gets packaged up really nicely and it's just extremely portable as you clone sites, as you save as, as you do things like that. The last one, certainly guilty, Friday, four o'clock, got like 25 tabs open, you know, and I don't need any of them, uh, but it can cause a lot of confusion if you have hub open in multiple tabs in the editing mode overwrite the changes accidentally saving here, then you go over here, save something differently, it causes problems. So uh, a few things to be aware of. All right, so what's in it for you, right? Well, as I mentioned, if you have ArcGIS Online today, you have Hub Basic at no additional cost. You wanna make use of the tools that you have, maximize your investment in ArcGIS today. Go ahead, start working in Hub Basic. Uh, NCAG wraps up at one build your first site. And we have a great blog. If you just Google Hub Basic, get started, you'll probably find it pretty easily. Um, try it out. You'll have a good time. It's fun. It's drag and drop. Don't have to be a coding whiz. If you want to do some light coding, you absolutely can using HTML and CSS. It's a great way to get your work out there, essentially. You are not stuck is the great news, right? We have the ability for you to then extend if you have the right business case, if you have the right scenario into Hub Premium. Um, so that is there for you if you need it. Really great for creating that two-way relationship with the public, with trusted groups, with universities, with other municipalities, so that y'all can share information, share editing access, uh, make sure the right people have access to the right data sets and not the wrong people. So that can be really nice. Uh, you can empower others in your organization to take this and run with it, right? Using the templates, using the teams. Uh, hey, uh, can you help me get started? Yes, uh, you know, Department X, we're gonna set this template up for you. We're gonna give you access to it. You can take it and run with it from there. That's the whole idea. Know that there's sometimes are challenges, I get it. Um, but we definitely want to be able to empower others to take ownership of their own hub pages have access to manage events if you need it. And then finally, Hub Premium also comes with five uh, licenses to community analysts, 
we find it's a really complimentary product. So we just went ahead and included it in that hub premium licensing. If you don't know much about community analysts, great way to tap into demographic information, create some really rich uh, data reports and infographics. And as you kind of hear some of these things, you know, imagine this going into your hub site to, uh, you know, inform the public, to inform some of those trusted groups about uh, what the breakdown of the, you know, area they are in uh, looks like using those rich data sets. All right. Bye. Thank you. Okay. So let's take a look at some of the features. We're going to start out super basic, sharing apps, data, and maps inside of ArcGIS Hub. Uh, got a good use case out of Durham here. They have a really wonderful open data portal, and it's very easy just to find all the data sets you might be interested in. You can see they have them categorized here. It's nice and organized. Uh, we can also go down and find various applications that we might be interested in. Uh, so for instance, let's check out uh, this nice prosperity, equity, and business landscape from Durham. It is going to be a story map collection. Super easy to find all that content. Scroll back up, you know, I have access to these categories, but I also have a really great index searchable uh, area where I can type in uh, anything I'm looking for. It's going to give us suggestions. It's going to tell us, is it data? Is it a map? Is it an app? And then I can come down into a category and say, show me all my transportation information. Uh, in this case, we have uh, some bridges we're going to check out. Click on this bridge data set. We totally overhauled the whole back end of Hub, uh, I think maybe about a year, year and a half ago. Um, you can still have access to kind of the, the previous metadata look and feel. But what we find is most people want to interact with this data. And we've made it even easier to get in there, create your own web map, whether you're you know, working at the city, working at the county, whether you're a member of the public, you can look at the REST endpoint if you're into that, right? Okay, I feel comfortable in that space. Let me dabble. Uh, I can tap into that pretty easily. I can look at the item in ArcGIS Online. Maybe that's, you know, where I feel most comfortable. Uh, cool. And I can then go further and actually start interacting with the data by doing things like styling it. So just making a quick representation of the data I'm seeing. I'm going to you know, symbolize this by bridge type, get some nice colors on my map to tell me a little bit more about the data. I can easily apply some filters. Uh, in this case, I want to only see uh, road bridges. We can look at the map and confirm that looks pretty good. That looks right. I think those are all the road bridges, right? Uh, they, they're all around the road, so I feel pretty confident about that. Uh, and then I can download that data set that's filtered, right? So the old you know, FTP way of sharing. You download the whole thing, you find out you got the wrong data set, you got to download the whole thing again. I'm pretty sure these are my road bridges. I filtered it, I can download it, I get access to the data. See, I just downloaded a shapefile there, so that's uh, ready to go. I can favorite this, come back to it, and also I can always look at the good old uh, columns and rows of my data set as well. All right, last one, and then we will wrap up. Let's look at uh, some quick community building uh, efforts. So uh, I mentioned Hub Premium comes with the ability to have these community users, allows folks to follow your initiatives, and also allows them to be able to get secure access to various pieces of information. In this case, you know we're looking at Volunteer Escondido, and they're trying to get more and more people to volunteer in the community. We talked about well, you know, 75% of Americans haven't volunteered. So this is a good way to spur that on. They're featuring some volunteer opportunities here. Uh, and we have a nice dashboard to feature those. Uh, but they can also then fill out a survey so that they can register as a volunteer in the community and get more information about how to volunteer, things like that. So really great way to get people more engaged in the community um, by using, you know, kind of those capabilities there. Here, you can also feature things like completed projects. I volunteered. Oh, I get to see the work I did, right? That makes me uh, feel a whole lot better about the fact that, you know, we're able to feature all the great work going on in the community, see the uh, volunteering efforts that we've done. And I mentioned there's a really great uh, YouTube video on that. And we're probably at time, right? Yep. Okay. So we've got some other great resources for y'all. Um, and I will be out there taking questions. And thank y'all so much for your time. Oh, okay. Does anybody have questions? We got five minutes. <laughs> yeah.
no questions? I think I think we got some virtual questions. Ah. Cool. Thank Can you all so much.